Hi, it's Tuesday, October the 22nd, and I continue to read and wonder my way through the book of Deuteronomy. And today it's Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 6 to 14. Um, as we started chapter 9, well, <laughs> Moses, um, speaking for God, said to Israel, as they're getting ready to go into the promised land, um, you're not getting the promised land uh, because you're deserving. <laughs> Don't think it's your righteousness that does it. No, no, the Canaanites are wicked. It's their wickedness um, that is, uh, well, that is dictating what happens. So you're going to come in and wipe them out because they're wicked, not because you deserve the land. Uh, and I kind of wondered about that a little bit because that didn't really go against what we've been hearing for the last eight chapters, but it certainly was a new element to it. And, uh, well, let's see if there's more of that. So here it is, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 6 to 14. Know then that the Lord your God is not giving you this good land to occupy because of your righteousness, for you are a stubborn people. Remember and do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness. You have been rebellious against the Lord from the day you came out of the land of Egypt until you came to this place. Even at Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath, and the Lord was so angry with you that he was ready to destroy you. When I went up to the mountain to receive the stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord made with you, I remained on the mountain forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. And the Lord gave me two stone tablets written with the finger of God. On them were all the words that the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. At the end of forty days and forty nights, the Lord gave me the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. Then the Lord said to me, Get up, go down quickly from here, for your people whom you have brought from Egypt have acted corruptly. They have been quick to turn from the way that I commanded them. They have cast an image for themselves. Furthermore, the Lord said to me, I have seen that this people is indeed a stubborn people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of you a nation mightier and more numerous than they. So, there we go. Well, we're reminded of the story of the Ten Commandments that we know from from the book of Exodus. And it isn't really changed much. Moses is remembering it, reminding them. Um, I guess what's here for us is that That Israel are also a rebellious people, uh, a stubborn people. Um, they can be a problem. And that God has been angry at them too, and that God almost wiped them out, but Moses stopped God from doing that. Why is Moses telling them that? Moses telling them that because, hey, look how great I am, I saved you. Um, maybe, except that as I have mentioned in, in uh, days previous, uh, meditations previous, I cynically don't believe this is Moses speaking. This is someone uh, assuming Moses' voice. Um, so they don't need to aggrandize Moses. Moses is already Moses, right? When, 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 when these words were written, when people first heard these words, Moses is Moses, not Moses in waiting. Uh, Moses is already Moses. So I think the emphasis here is simply that we are all vulnerable. Um, the Canaanites are being destroyed. You're going to destroy them, we're told, because of their wickedness. Now, let's not forget your capacity for wickedness as well. Uh, you know, it's interesting words that we use. Um, rebellious, you know, you've been rebellious against the Lord. Uh, you are a stubborn people. Um, and and then, of course, as we heard about, uh, about those uh, in Canaan, that they're wicked. Um, wicked to me sounds like a certain kind of immorality. Rebellious is pushing off, pushing off the authority of God. Uh, and, and stubbornness, I guess, is, is not willing to listen to God and what God has to say. Um, I'm, I'm assuming something like that. I, you know, I mean, 
Now, it could also just be we don't use the same word all the time. But when I hear um, Moses saying, you know, I've quoting God, I've seen this people is indeed a stubborn people, so let me alone that I may destroy them and blot, and blot out their name from under heaven. When I hear God, so I hear God say that, it's, well, it's, it's their stubbornness. So stubbornness, it, to me, is the inability to not just to listen to God, but to follow God. When 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 your plan and God's plan are different, and you refuse to follow God's plan, that's stubbornness, right? In the context that we know here. Um, Moses had been gone, and it felt like a long time to them, 40 days and 40 nights. Um, which, again, one of those symbolic numbers, is it really the number between 39 and 41, or is it symbolically gone a long time, gone enough for something to happen? Right? We, we know that we're in the, in, the, in the desert. We've been in the wilderness for 40 years, more than enough time for a generation to die off, for attitudes to change, that kind of thing. Rain and poured for 40 days and nights when we flooded the world. Was that what it was, or did it, it, it again, rain long enough um, for, for the world to be flooded, for everything to be wiped away? Was Moses up there for so long, well, long enough that everybody forgot about Moses? So was that 40 days or 4 days or 400 days? The fact is, Moses was gone and they forgot. So, having forgot about Moses, they felt the need for some kind of God. Something to pray to. So, they get Aaron to make a golden calf. Um, why a golden calf? Well, I think that they were, you know, looking for a fertility God. Looking for one that promises um, good crops, um, uh, children, wealth. All right? This is, this is, this is a, a God that gives you good things. Um... And oddly enough, the God of Abraham is not simply a God who gives you good things, but a God that makes you a better person, uh, a God that companions you. But this, this, this calf, well, this is a God to give you good things. So rather than staying faithful to the God who makes us a better people, we go with the God that's going to make us rich. And when God says, no, 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 strive to be a better people, we go, no, we're going to stay with trying to be rich. Um, and so, um, so, so what we're getting in, in that uh, is, is this idea that, um, that they won't listen, basically. And that's what's made God so angry there. And I wonder about that. I mean, if I think about rebellious, am I rebellious? Not particularly. Uh, not, some people may disagree, but 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 largely no. I'm not. I don't. Not so much for overthrowing everything and taking over myself. I'm not that kind of rebellious. Um, am I wicked? I don't think I am particularly immoral. Um, but am I stubborn? Do I want to follow my inclination to these things that make me happy? Um, not make me better, make me happy. Um, yeah, I think I can be that way. I think my biggest challenge, I think the biggest challenge for many people that I know is to not be lured into these false promises of the world. Right by this, you'll feel better. Um, you know, uh, make this trip change your life. Um, I, I, I think that that's that that that's tempting. Um, 
get lots of followers uh, on Instagram, add to your likes, you'll be a better, you know, th th those kind of things. Th th yeah, it's tempting to do that. I have a, a consultant who works with me doing the digital stuff. I'm like, a consultant, he's a, he's a producer, he's brilliant, who says, okay, we can, f you know, work with this algorithm, we can do that, and then we can get, we can get, you know, 50,000 views for the, for a thing. And, and you look at, oh, man, 50,000 views, that must be, must be fantastic. That'd be great to get 50,000 views. But why? Why do I want 50,000 views? And then I need to talk to God. Why do I want 10,000 views? Why, how could I be happy with 20 views? Um, and, and, and asking God what it is that, but there's a, the temptation to want to go for the more. The world's like that. And sometimes I find myself giving into that rather than opting to be the better person. I will go for the greatest reward in in in, 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 in the view of, of the society I live in. So go after the the more money, the flashier this, the flashier that, the enhanced reputation. So I can be stubborn. Um, now, I think Moses is being particularly dramatic. <laughs> or the voice of Moses is 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 is, is being particularly dramatic here. Um, but the the bottom line is, if you're not willing to work with God, then bad things are going to happen, right? So in this context, if you're not willing to work with God, which is by the way, be completely obedient, it's not a give and take really. Um, but you know, in, in the context of the way it's told here, unless you're willing to be obedient to the commandments, uh, then you're going to be wiped out. Um, the Canaanites are being wiped out because they're just bad people. If you don't listen to the commandments, you too are a bad person. You, you will be a bad people. You also will be wicked. And so um, one day, some may come and drive you out the same way. Or God just might do it in, in, in anger. Because God almost did it. Almost did it when we forgot uh, about, about our faith. When we went after money. When we went after secular reward. Um, the challenge for me living in 2024 and living the way that I choose to live is I don't want to shun all of that secular stuff entirely. Um, I like a good concert. Um, I like my car that's new. Uh, I like that I have a little bit of money in the bank. Not a lot, but I got a little bit of money in the bank. I, I like having those things. Um, and yes, I suppose there is somebody more faithful than I who would tell me that I need to work at not valuing those things at all. I don't think I overvalue them, but I do value them. Um, so I am drawn into what the world says, but at the same time, I take my faith very seriously and I keep talking to God about it. I, I see the relationship with God as not being one simply of total obedience, but of being a real relationship where I talk to God and I listen to God. As I talk to God, I share the truth of, of the things that I might want, of how I might feel. Um, as I listen to God, um, I also try to listen not for affirmation, but for challenge, to listen to what God is actually saying to me, how God is trying to help me be a better person, have a better life, which may not be the way I thought so. Right? I mean... You know, uh, an hour from now, it might feel to me that the best thing I could possibly do is sit down and eat a great big black forest cake. Okay? But in fact, it's not good for my blood sugars. It's not good for my weight. It's not good for how I'm going to sleep tonight. It's not good for any of those things. I still might do it because it really tastes good when I eat black forest cake. But I don't really want to do that. It's like that. When I'm drawn to some things, I think, well, I really want to do this thing or that thing, but it's the, but I can, but I know that God is inviting me into something else. I am stubborn if I never listen. I won't say that I always listen because that wouldn't be true, but I think I mostly listen, or I listen an awful lot, uh, and 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 so I feel like I'm in an exchange with God. But I give God that. Um, that priority in my life that I want to listen that I want to so that I may be stubborn but I'm working on it 
Uh, I may be stubborn, but I recognize my stubbornness and can let go of it from time to time. I go, Ugh, I'm just being stubborn. This is my takeaway from this anyway. Not not that God's going to blot me out, um, but that, that there is a difference perhaps between rebelliousness and wickedness and stubbornness. And um, yeah, I mean, maybe there are times in my life when I am rebellious or when I'm perhaps wicked. But the one I relate to the most right now is, yes, occasionally stubborn because I can hear God, but I choose not to pay attention. That to me is stubbornness. Wicked, I'm not hearing God at all. I'm just, I'm just all wrapped up in me. Um, and rebellious, yeah, I hear God, but frankly, I know better than God. I want to kick God out. I want to take over. Pretty sure that that's not what the author of Deuteronomy wanted me to think about, but that's what I'm taking away from this this moment. Um, yeah, recognizing that I've, I've pretty much got rebellious in hand. Not always, but pretty close. Uh, wickedness, oh, it can maybe get out of hand, I suppose, but I don't think it does. Uh, certainly not much. So wickedness is not my big issue, but stubbornness, in fact, is. It's not that I want to replace God. It's not that I want to ignore God. It's just that sometimes I do listen to God and I still choose to go the other way because I'm not giving up on, on the black forest cake that I think that I really want, even though I know it's not the right thing for me. Okay, I turned that into a little tiny moral uh, sermon and I'm going to leave it right there for you. See what you think of it. Uh, and, uh, and let's go on and have a day. I'm probably not having Black Forest cake today. Um, but let me offer a prayer before, uh, before we wrap up. So let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the many ways that you speak to us. In scripture, in discussion, in engagement. God, we, we acknowledge that. Sometimes uh, we hear you but know better. Sometimes we choose not to hear you at all. Other times we hear you and we know the wisdom, the love uh, of what you offer, and yet we still get, we still go another direction because we're occasionally stubborn. God, thank you for your ongoing love, the way that you continue to talk to us, even when we are stubborn or wicked or rebellious. God, as we hear your word emerge, may we follow it. May we put down our agendas and our stubbornness. And may we follow your word and grow in faith. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's enough for me today. But I do look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until I get to see you, God bless you. Please know that God sees you, knows you, and loves you exactly as you are, exactly where you are. And, and that God's love doesn't just come to you and stop. No, it, it, it moves through you into the world in remarkable ways. You make a difference in the world by being you. So thank you for being you. Keep doing that, please. And uh, hopefully I get to see you tomorrow. Until then, God bless. <laughs>